Think Realty Nation, it's your host, Avi Golhar. Welcome to the Think Realty Podcast. Lots of information headed your way today. I'm interviewing the managing director of RCN Capital. His name is Jeffrey Tesh, also a good buddy of mine. Uh, we're talking about a couple of things. One, what's RCN been doing? What strategies have they been deploying to be success- so successful over the years? And, uh, of course, we'll talk about the interest rate environment and what's been going on. Following that, uh, we have one tip, just one tip. If you want to find an awesome contractor, this is the one thing that I've done over the last many years to find these people. And it may not be what you think. We'll end the show uh, talking about the six simple ways uh, to cut costs in your real estate investing business. So we'll do our best to get through as many of those ways as possible. But let's go ahead and get started. Here's the show. This podcast is brought to you by Roofstock. If you're ready to buy your next investment property, then check out Roofstock, the number one marketplace for buying and selling single-family rental homes. Featuring tenant-occupied rental properties for sale in over 20 states, Roofstock makes it easy to invest in cash-flowing real estate outside your local market. And to help you invest remotely with confidence, all properties are backed by Roofstock's industry-leading 30-day money-back guarantee. Sign up for free today to find your next cash-flowing rental property at roofstock.com slash thinkrealty. So the number one secret that I have to find good subcontractors is the following. I would go to the painter and say, what drywall person do you like to do work after? Because that will tell you exactly who the person is, why this drywall person is good, and what about their work is super high quality. Also, an example, what framer does the plumber like to follow after? Right, so following the followers here, a very interesting tip and something that you can use right now when driving to your areas, just walk right up to these folks and say, hey, um, who's the guy or gal that did the work before you got started? And why do you like them? And sometimes you'll hear good reviews, sometimes you'll hear bad reviews, and you'll know right then and there, yay, nay, or what's up. All right, so my guest today, as I mentioned before, his name's Jeffrey Tesh. He's the managing uh, director at RCN Capital. Uh, he knows a lot of what's going on in the lending industry and what investors uh, are doing uh, to really take that next step and reach that next level. Uh, so, Jeff, welcome to the show. All right, so good to be back on your podcast. Hope all's well with you. Hey, all is well with me. I'm excited for the conversation. Uh, so, give us a little background on who you are, what you do, and uh, what RCN Capital is. Sure. So, my name is Jeffrey Tesh. I'm the managing director of RCN Capital. Uh, we formed this company really coming out of the crisis in 2010. Uh, as a way to take hard money out of the shadows, professionalize it, and make it a legitimate commercial option for investors all across America who are looking to fund not only short-term bridge, meaning fix and flip, fix and resell, but also long-term rental. Uh, It's been a great ride over the past eight or nine years, really taking a product that deserved uh, a true commercialization and making it uh, something that we could really uh, kind of stick our stake a, a banner in and be proud of. That's awesome. And RCN's been around for a while. Uh, what's made RCN so successful over the last many, many years? Yeah, I mean, really what it comes down to is people. Um, you know, I have been fortunate to be involved in retail businesses as well as straight up investment uh, commercial opportunities over the years. And what I learned is no matter what you're selling, whether it be sandwiches on Main Street or mufflers or straight up bank loans, what folks really want is service. And unfortunately, most commercial lending institutions pay this a lot of lip service. Uh, So when we formed this company, Uh, back in 2010, what I really wanted to do was take the time to put in processes, 
that would enable our team members to give the type of customer service that investors deserve. Let me give you a few examples of that. So let's say you're a, a new investor, right? Mm-hmm. You've been watching those uh, late night programs on fix and flip, and you're ready to take some of your hard earned money and dive into the investing world. Yeah. So you're going to need some sort of finance to be able to accomplish that task. What we do at RCN is we work with the customer as if it was our own money. And what I mean by that is we pair a one-on-one account executive with that customer, whether it be new or old, and we take them through the process that we've done over thousands and thousands of times to make sure that that investment makes sense. Our selfish interest in that, of course, is we want to be paid back. And if we're not paid back, we want to make sure that our asset is protected. But more importantly, the customer is taken through a process where we vet their loan and we teach them how to make sure that they're successful. It's that high touch customer service that has really made us so successful. So there are a lot of lenders in this space, right? Like the more, the hotter, I feel like the hotter the local real estate markets get, like they're just lenders that will just pop out of nowhere. And all of a sudden you have X, Y, and Z funding or X, Y, and Z this and, you know, Polaris Capital Group or whatever. You have a very distinct offering and you have a very distinct uh, follow-up process and you make me as an investor uh, feel like I'm part of the family. You're, you're helping to educate me so that I can be successful which then lends to this, no pun intended, which then lends to this, uh, lends to the quality of this relationship. Um, How does RCN uh, have that extra competitive advantage out uh, from uh, from some of your competitors? So that's a great question. And what we've done um, really from, from the beginning is spend more on human resources than we really needed to. And and what I mean by that is, it would be very easy for us to do a call center model where the customer is assigned a loan file number and there's any number of individuals that will service that particular loan when the customer calls in, whether it be underwriting, whether it be closing or post-closing. What we did is we took a separate, uh, really more expensive track, which is hiring folks to have that one-on-one relationship with the customer. So when a customer calls in and they're first uh, assigned a loan officer, that loan officer becomes invested in the success of the customer. And let me repeat that again. The loan officer is invested in the success of the customer. Mm. And the reason I say that is the loan officer is paid on whether or not that customer is successfully completing their loan. That means underwriting, that means closing, that means post-closing, and eventually means paying us off and moving on to the next project. You know, that it's interesting. In the conventional real estate world, meaning owner-occupied, the average length of term for a homeowner is in and around 10 years. That, those are the latest stats from uh, NAR, from the National Association of Realtors. Yeah. On our end of transactions, the typical turnover is between eight and nine months. So when we develop that relationship between the internal loan officer and the customer, they see the rewards over and over and over again on both sides. And that's really made a huge difference in propelling our brand uh, to be what it is today. And that's a really good point, right? You take a look at some of these uh, lenders and it's like a one and done, right? I'm going to bring the investor borrower in through the door. The investor borrower uh, will borrow, say, $200,000 on which uh, the lender will make a little a, 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 a fee, a uh, origination point. And then that's it. They never talk to, they never see the borrower again. It doesn't matter because the relationship has not been built. It's not strong. And it's like building a mansion on sand. It's not going to happen. From your perspective, the people on your team are successful because they can carry that tradition of customer service forward. But they're also, like you said, invested in the customers, in the investor borrower success. On average, 
You mentioned that you have an investor uh, that will do, uh, the, the, the term of their loans are generally about nine to 10 months, right? How many deals is an average client doing with RCN? Is it one, is it two? It's definitely not one, but is it two, three, four, five, six, a dozen? Yeah, sir. So great question, right? So there's two sides to things. One, you have the fix and flip, and then you also have the longer term rental, which is a product that has really been expanding across the US. So let's take the fix and flip side first. So the fix and flip, the average customer with RCN Capital has done 3.4 loans at any one time. Now, that's over the course of X number of years and they're repeat customers and they come back. From there, you have a wide variety of, of uh, high touch customers, which are folks that have maybe four, five, six projects floating at one time versus the more casual W-2 employee, meaning they have a regular job and this is like a side gig, they might be only running one or two projects at any one time. Mm -hmm. For us, both customers are just as important. The way we look at things is if we can ensure that our customers are successful and they begin to see the amount of money that can be made in short-term bridge financing, they will come back again and again. Now, on the other side of things, which is the longer-term rental, folks are building portfolios, right? So they find an investment, can be a one to four family house, yep. anywhere across the US, they determine how much they're gonna rent it out, and then they need financing for the long term on that. What's interesting is, and, and this is an amazing stat, right? So across the US, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 11 million properties, meaning single family one to four, that are held as an investment, meaning non-owner occupied. Out of those 10 or 11 million properties, over 50, I believe it's 51 and a half percent is a portfolio of one, right? That's an amazing statistic. And it's a huge opportunity for customers yes. to begin to increase their long-term rental portfolios. So we talk about investors um, using different forms of capital. And especially, we've got a lot of roadblocks. We have a very interesting economy in different markets uh, today. What other forms of capital can investors use to kind of put the puzzle pieces together to get deals done? Sure. So there is no question uh, across the U.S., geography makes a huge difference in what type of funding our customers are needing. Yes. Meaning, not only are we doing short-term bridge landing on fix and flip, we're also doing ground-up construction, especially in markets where most of the dated inventory has been already bought up by investors. And then the longer-term rental for folks who are acquiring properties for that long-term portfolio. So let me give you an example. Okay. Uh, Nashville, okay? Love One of the Nashville, hottest great markets. city. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Everybody likes to go there. Yeah. Companies are re relocating for friendly business uh, terms. Yeah. But what's happened is all the dated inventory, when I say all, uh, you know, just about everything has been bought up, rehabbed, and put back into the marketplace. So this is putting a huge pressure on the local investors on how can they still participate. So what we rolled out about a year ago is what's known as a ground up construction product for infill. Infill means existing neighborhoods, existing roads, where there are opportunities to build ground up construction. And especially in hot markets such as Nashville, it's a huge opportunity for our existing customer base to still be participating in that marketplace and seeing a great return on their money. That's incredible. I mean, when I was, uh, I was looking at opportunities in Atlanta, I live in Atlanta, and we were doing a lot of infill projects from like 20, like 12-ish to all the way until like 2017, 2018-ish. And then things really got out of hand. But we still have a couple of infill lots in like the Grant Park area, Inman Park area, and it's fantastic. 
right? So I can't wait to maybe start working on some of these uh, some of these projects again. So I'll definitely get in touch with RCN. But you bring up a really good point, right? There's all the inventory that needs to be rehabbed. I mean, that's like the majority of it's already been rehabbed. It's already on the market. So what do you do next? It's going to be the infill. For RCN investors, uh, RCN's investors, where are the opportunities right now that you're seeing? Are they primarily in the infill piece? Sure. So once again, we're going to go back to geography, right? Yeah. So let's start on the West Coast. Um, areas such as Seattle and Portland, it's going to be almost all strictly infill. Most of the properties there have been rehabbed. And believe it or not, the market has stabilized to such a point where if you're buying an existing structure, there really is no profit to be made. That's Everybody right. knows what the housing stock is worth. And, and there's just very little bit money to be made. It's, it would be an infall opportunity. Yeah. In California, it's an extremely dynamic market. And what's so different about California is there's an acute housing shortage in the state of California. It's well documented. Everybody's aware of the homeless population and there doesn't seem to be a solution. So what investors are doing today is they're doing what's known as accessory dwelling units. California passed a law, I believe it was about 18 months, 24 months ago, that allows square footage expansion for accessory dwelling units to try and deal with the acute housing sh shortage in the state of California. Yes, that's right. So our investors are taking, taking this opportunity, you know, houses that were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, most of them have garages, turning those garages into additional units, and they're getting a great, great bang for their buck on investments. I, I got to tell you, yep. the investors in California that work with RCN are seeing a huge return on what we'll call workforce housing. Yep, that's, that's right. Adding the accessory dwelling units. It really is amazing. Um, that's incredible. Uh, just kind of working our way across the country. Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth is still on fire. We're seeing a lot of new construction yep. in the greater DW area, which is putting some pressure on housing prices. Yeah. Now, I will say it's still a very strong market, especially due to the uh, never ending inflow of folks from around the country moving into Texas. But especially from California, there are a lot of Californians moving into Texas for sure. I mean, these, Absolutely. yeah, these might, but these migration patterns, if you actually start looking at them, which you have, I know, but if I think Realty Nation, if you're, if you're looking at these migration patterns of just people and where they're going and why, it becomes very evident and you can start to see some trends that you can pick up on. Um, Jeff, we have about 30 seconds and then uh, we have to wrap up here. Uh, one last tip and then the best way to get in touch with RCN if I need a loan. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the final tip I would have, and this goes for our existing customers or new customers, is, and I know it sounds simple, but do your homework. Please yes. don't execute purchase and sales contracts without taking the time to either contact a lender or contact an experienced contractor who is going to be your partner on the ground. You don't want to get upside down in these projects before you've even started. That is such good advice. S keep doing your homework, people. And uh, Jeff, how do we get in touch with you? Real simple. Just go to www.rcncapital, that's capital with an A, dot com. Look forward to hearing from you. Jeff, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I uh, think Realty Nation, Jeffrey Tesh, uh, Managing Director, at RCN Capital. Uh, we have a few more topics we're talking about, but we got to go to break. I'll be right back. This segment is brought to you by Real Property Management, which is the largest real estate residential property management franchise in North America, managing tens of thousands of properties for individuals, investors, and institutions throughout the country. Learn more at realpropertymgt.com or call 888-806-7088. So there are many ways that you can cut costs in your real estate business. But I'm gonna talk about maybe one or two of them just because these are so vitally important. And especially right now, number one, you want to borrow wisely. 
it's not okay just to apply for loans and pay four points or five points or six points. Yes, that still happens. And 12 to 18, 17, 16% interest rates. More specifically, if you are over leveraging yourself, you're really putting yourself in a dangerous position right now. So please, please be careful when you are borrowing money and make sure that the terms are win-win, right? It's a win for you and it's a win for your lender. If it's not, then one of you may feel a little slighted, not good about the relationship and situation. So make sure it's a win-win and everything is outlined properly. That is really, really important for me. Um, the other thing that I would also recommend, I have a couple of them written here, use freebies, okay? Like if you're looking at technology, CRMs, things like this that you want to implement, I mean, I get it, right? Like you have Salesforce or Infusionsoft, but you can use HubSpot, you can use Pipedrive, you can use Podio. These are free tools that you can use and not have to pay thousands of dollars a year and then have your startup costs look so dramatically higher than they need to be. It's just a quick little trick. For social media, for example, use something like Buffer. Using Buffer enables you to post to everything, post all your pictures, your video, to all social media platforms for less than $10 a month. So, and they also have a free version. So take a look at something like this. If you are sharing uh, files, closing documents, et cetera, use Google Drive. You don't need Dropbox. So being very conscious of where you're putting your money and investing your money, especially when you're starting your business and growing your business, is super important. This podcast is brought to you by Roofstock. If you're ready to buy your next investment property, then check out Roofstock, the number one marketplace for buying and selling single-family rental homes. Featuring tenant-occupied rental properties for sale in over 20 states, Roofstock makes it easy to invest in cash-flowing real estate outside your local market. And to help you invest remotely with confidence, all properties are backed by Roofstock's industry-leading 30-day money-back guarantee. Sign up for free today to find your next cash-flowing rental property at roofstock.com slash thinkrealty. That wraps up the show. If you have any questions, get in touch. Go to thinkrealty.com slash podcast uh, to watch and listen to the rest of the collection of the Think Realty podcast uh, that we have. If you want to reach out to me directly, feel free to do so on LinkedIn and Instagram at Avi Golhar. I hope you learned a lot from Jeffrey Tesh's interview, uh, the managing director of RCN Capital. I certainly did. And certainly, absolutely get in touch with your questions. We might just feature them right here on the Think Realty podcast. Until next time, happy investing. Yeah.